Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're gonna talk about cross dial alignment. In the previous two videos, we talked about a one-step method called ribbon face. And in that method, we found slope first, and we used slope to calculate the shims required under the front feet and shims required under the back feet. We're going to do much the same procedure in this video. The difference is that in rim and face, we used our face reading to tell us what the angular misalignment is. With cross dial, we're not doing any face readings. We're actually doing two rim readings. So the way that we find slope is going to be a little bit different. Once we find slope, the rest of the procedure is the same. Here's a photo of a setup that uses cross dial. So assuming that this is the fixed, and this is the movable machine. We have dial indicators set up on both shafts, on each shaft, across from each other. A simplified drawing would be this. So we have the movable machine or the machine to be shimmed, and we have the fixed over here. So we have the fixed shaft here, the movable shaft here. So you'll see that there's a dial indicator mounted on the movable shaft, but reads on the fixed coupling or shaft. We have a dowel indicator mounted on the fixed shaft and it reads on the movable coupling or shaft. What we're going to do first is take those two rim readings and use that to find our slope. So here's a rough drawing with our dial indicators and typically dial A will be mounted on the movable shaft but will read on the fixed coupling or possibly the fixed shaft. Dial B is mounted on the fixed shaft and will read on the movable coupling. Both of these readings will be rim readings, so remember to divide by two to get the actual offset. Dial A is usually zeroed at 12 o'clock, while dial B is usually zeroed at six o'clock. Then both are rotated 180 degrees and we take the readings. So let's do an example if dial A is zeroed at 12 o'clock and reads negative 20 thousandths at six o'clock. Dial B is zeroed at six o'clock and reads negative 30 at 12 o'clock. Knowing those readings, as well as the distance between the readings, we can find the slope. Let's say the distance between the dials, dial A and dial B is five inches. What I like to do first is make a drawing and I make my the center line of my fixed shaft, I extend it and I make it parallel to the floor and then I show where the movable shaft is in relation to that at point A and at point B. So here's the fixed shaft and at point A, if the dial indicator is mounted on the movable shaft, zeroed at 12 o'clock and reads negative 20 at six o'clock, think of the direction that the plunger is going. A negative reading on your dial indicator means the plunger is releasing. A positive means it's being pushed in. So if the plunger is releasing, that means that this fixed coupling is higher. Or this fixed shaft is higher than the movable. But not by 20 thousandths. Remember to divide by 2 by 10 thousandths. So at dial A, The movable is 10 thousandths lower than the fixed. At dial B, we zero at six o'clock, rotate and we read negative 30 thousandths at 12 o'clock. So now the dial is on top with the plunger below it and it's negative so the plunger is releasing, which means then that this coupling or this shaft is lower than the fixed, but not by 30, by 15. So if I were to draw my machine to be shimmed in relation to the fixed, I can use that information to see what it looks like. If these had been the same value, then there would be no angular misalignment. There would only be offset misalignment. But because these are different, that tells us that there's angular misalignment. And to determine what that angular misalignment is in terms of slope, 
I'm going to take the difference. And the way that we take the difference is you always take the offset at B and subtract the offset at A. That will help you determine whether it's a positive or negative slope. So we take offset at B minus offset at A. And we divide by the distance between the readings or the dials. Remember you use the offset, you don't use the actual reading because we don't want to worry about whether the readings are positive or negative. We want to worry about if the difference is positive or negative. And also the readings are going to be double what the actual offset is. So in this case, we're going to take the offset at B is 15 thousandths minus the offset at A, which is 10 thousandths. Divide by the distance between those dials, which is five inches. So our slope is going to be one thousandths of an inch per inch. And it is a positive slope when it slopes down like that because the gap is wider at the top and we know that's a positive slope. Once we've determined the slope, we plug into the very same formulas that we used for the rim and face method. Let's take a look. So in our first example, we've already discussed that dial A is zeroed at 12 o'clock and reads negative 20 thousandths at six o'clock. This dial indicator is mounted on the movable shaft, read on the fixed coupling. So that tells us when we divide by two that the machine to be shimmed is 10 thousandths lower at point A or at the fixed coupling. At point B, the dial is zeroed at six o'clock, reads negative 30 thousandths at 12 o'clock. We've already discussed that that means that the movable is 15 thousandths lower at dial B. So if, you're, if you have a setup like this and both readings are negative, it means that the movable shaft is low at both of those points. So our machine to be shimmed shaft is looking like this. We can see that at the front feet and at the back feet, we're going to need, need more than the 15 thousandths in order to, to correct it. It needs that much more at the front feet and that much more at the back feet. And we're gonna find those values using slope. So slope is calculated by taking the offset at B, which is 15 thousandths, minus the offset at A, which is 10 thousandths, over distance between the two dials, which is five inches. So our slope is 0.001 thousandths of an inch per inch. We're now gonna use that to calculate the shims needed under the front feet. And we're going to use exactly the same formula as we did for rim and face. That formula says we take slope, we multiply by the distance from the movable coupling to the front feet. So from the movable coupling to the front feet is four inches. And we add to that the offset as at B. There are two offsets here. So if you're using the distance from the movable coupling, you have to use the offset at the movable coupling. Could you use the offset and the distance from the fixed? Yes. So it's up to you. I want to be consistent with what we did with rim and face. So I'm always going to use the offset at the movable and the distance from the movable. So we add the offset at the movable, which is 15 thousandths. So it's going to drop down an additional four thousandths of an inch. We add that to the 15 and we get a total of 19 thousandths. So 15 thousandths plus four thousandths of an inch. So in total, we're going to need 19 thousandths of an inch under the front feet. To calculate the shims required under the back feet, there's just one slight difference. Instead of the distance from the movable coupling to the front feet, we use the distance from the movable coupling to the back feet. Everything else is the same. So we use the slope. And we multiply to the distance from the movable coupling to the back feet, which is four plus 16, which is 20 inches. Plus the offset at B is 15. So notice the only difference in these two formulas is that number there. One thousandths of an inch times 20 inches will be 20 thousandths. 
plus 15 thousandths is 35 thousandths of an inch. Shim thickness required at the back feet. And that's because from this point, the machine to be shimmed dropped down an additional 20 thousandths of an inch. So that 20 thousandths plus 15 thousandths gives us 35 thousandths. I want you to understand that this was a positive slope. We had to add these amounts. So when your gap is wider at the top or it slopes down, then it's a positive slope. Sometimes you're gonna have negative slopes, so let's take a look at an example of a negative slope. In our next example, we have dial A zeroed at 12 o'clock, reads negative 80 thousandths at six o'clock. So again, the plunger is releasing, that, so that means that our fixed coupling is going to be higher than our movable by half of this amount. So that means our movable will be lower by 40 thousandths. Dial B is zeroed at six o'clock, reads negative 70 thousandths at 12 o'clock. So that means the plunger again is releasing. So that means the movable coupling is lower than the fixed by half of this amount, which would be 35 thousandths. So the machine to be shimmed center line would look like that in comparison to the fixed center line if it was extended. We're going to find the slope same way we did before. Offset at B is 35 thousandths, minus offset at A is 40 thousandths, divided by the distance between the dials, which is five inches. So in this case, our slope is negative one thousandths of an inch per inch. The reason it's negative is that if we were to extend from our movable coupling here, you'll notice that our machine to be shimmed is actually higher at both of the front legs and the back legs. We're not going to need the full 35 thousandths of shims. What we want to do is find this amount and subtract it from 35, and the way that we do that is using negative slope. We plug into our formula. Slope is negative one thousandths of an inch per inch times the distance from the movable coupling to the front feet, which is four inches, plus the offset at B, which is 35. Our machine to be shimmed is actually four thousandths higher at this point than it was at this point. So if we subtract four thousandths or add a negative four thousandths to 35 thousandths, we get 31 thousandths of an inch. Back shims, same idea, our negative slope. Multiply the slope to the distance from the movable coupling to the back feet, which is 20 inches. Add the offset at the movable. So negative one thousandths of an inch times 20 will be negative 20 thousandths. If we add 35, we get 15 thousandths. So in other words, it was 35 low at this point, straight across, but it came up 20 thousandths, so now it's only 15 thousandths low. So if we were to put 31 thousandths of an inch shims under the front feet and 15 thousandths of an inch under the back feet, that would correct both the angular and the offset misalignment all in one fell swoop. I chose a very easy number for slopes so that the formula was easier. However, if you're working with numbers that don't work out that nicely, it's okay, you've got a calculator. Just make sure you don't round off whatever your slope is. When you're using the slope, use the value, the whole value that's on your calculator. Understand that when the gap is wider at the bottom or the center line of the machine to be shimmed slopes up, that's a negative slope. And probably the most important thing is to interpret or understand your readings to start with. I recommend doing this drawing because I think it helps you visualize what's going on and you'll be able to see if you make a mistake easier if you've got this visual representation. I guarantee these will get easier with practice.